What's happening, everybody? Christian Pedersen joined by Dan Dickow back for another episode of the Gonzaga Nation podcast. You're catching us on a mailbag edition. This is where we take fan submitted questions that you guys have sent to us on social media at Fan Nation Zags. On, I'm just going to start saying all of the apps because I'm tired of keeping up with <laughs> for the artist formerly known as Twitter and if now threads and this, like all of the apps. Our social media person is amazing. The content is everywhere. You can also just get us on the website. Dan, let's answer some questions. People want to know a lot of different things. And one of them that got sent in, I thought this was kind of interesting. They want to know what's going on with Coach Few and Team USA. He seems like he's the only college guy involved in this whole thing because uh, Coach K is now retired. But what exactly is his role? Because this seems like a pretty big honor. Oh, it's an incredible honor uh, when you look at it. So Team USA, uh, Coach K led it for a number of years. Um, and there would be a few college coaches, a few NBA coaches that would uh, uh, typically join the bench and help out. So this year, Coach Few uh, is a part of Steve Kerr's staff. So Steve Kerr, obviously one of the most uh, celebrated players, coaches in NBA history, Golden State Warriors head coach. He's now the head coach of Team USA running things. Uh, and his three assistant coaches are Coach Few, Ty Lu, who's coached in a number of NBA finals as a young coach in the NBA, and Eric Spolstra, who's won NBA titles, who's a future Hall of Famer. So it just kind of shows you the amount of credibility, the amount of respect um, that, that Coach Few has amongst the, the basketball world and the best of the best he's included in. And I think, you know, what it what it shows you is just how uh, how he's grown as a coach. You know, he has been part of some of the different Team USA teams in the past at other levels. Uh, but now this is the men's senior national team. So this is uh, essentially a stepping stone to be able to be a part of a coaching staff in the Olympics, which when you think about it, that's pretty dang cool. So um, it's an impressive uh, thing to put on his resume. He's definitely earned it. But his role as an assistant is now much different than it is for him at Gonzaga. Uh, if you kind of watch some of the clips uh, of practices and workouts leading up to, to their games, you're going to see him in a whole different role than you would see him at Gonzaga where, you know, he'll be shagging balls. He'll be rebounded for guys. He'll be in drills where at Gonzaga practices, you know, he's the one kind of uh, occasionally doing, you know, showing things in drills, but he's not rebounded for guys. In the in the Gonzaga role, he's typically putting people, coaches, managers, et cetera, in positions uh, to go through drill work, skill work, how he sees it fit. In Team USA, he's immersing himself in an all new role, uh, and I think that's that's good because you know you never want to stop learning. And I think for Coach Few to be around those other three high level coaches, uh, be around the game with a different. Uh, viewpoint of, of international basketball and how they play, I think it's only going to enhance his, his uh, productivity and, and how good of a coach he is at Gonzaga. I'd be curious, you know, coach few decently well, do you think that having that break to go shag balls and play that different role is something that he is struggling with letting go of the team and he wants to be in control? Or do you think this is a nice little break for him? No, it's, it's uh, he definitely views it as an honor. I mean, look, look at it this way. I mean, if if you don't want to take on the added expectation is not the right word, but if you want to, don't want to, to accept the honor uh, of being a part of something, it's very easy to say no and keep six extra weeks of your summer. We all know how he loves to fish and do different things, um, but, but he's got a tremendous amount of pride in his country. He takes the invitations from USA back basketball uh, with with a lot of honor and so he wants to join and, and represent our country and I think that's unbelievable uh, to hear and see uh, and to know that he wants to take you know four or five six weeks whatever it ends up being out of his summer and being a part of it and if you said this is a, truly a stepping stone to being on that Olympic coach and staff an Olympic gold medal probably helps in Gonzaga recruiting so it all feeds back to that same thing um, last week on a podcast we talked about how the tournament schedule uh, the the season opening tournament, not the March tournament, the season opening tournament schedules have started to come out and Gonzaga knows that they're headed to Maui. And we had some people writing in, when is the rest of the schedule going to be coming out for Gonzaga? Well, speaking of that Maui invitational tournament, unfortunately with all the devastation of the wildfires in Maui uh, and 
prayers and heartfelt thoughts go out there. To, that's just devastating. Who knows where that tournament's held this year? Um, you know, I have not seen anything in regards to if the line of Civic Center uh, escaped the fires. Um, I haven't seen anything yet that they're talking about moving locations. I know during COVID, uh, the Maui Invitational was was played. I believe it was in uh, um, North Carolina one year, and then the other year it was in, in Las Vegas, I know for sure. But uh, we'll see what happens there. But in regards to the rest of the schedule, for Gonzaga and will be released, I would imagine in the next two weeks or so, um, you know, typically Gonzaga has been one of the later schools that I can remember in releasing their schedule. Uh, many times it's because they got so many different moving parts and the moving parts are scheduling of high level games that are made for TV. So it would be, you know, lining up the two schools schedule with an ESPN or with a CBS uh, for a neutral site location. And then to, to, to add one more layer to that, you got to make sure that the arena that you want to play in and the location, it has an available date. So for example, I know Gonzaga played a few years back in the Jerry Colangelo classic in Phoenix. Well, that, that arena is where the Phoenix suns play. So it's not as easy as, as, Hey, I want to play this school uh, on this date. Um, it has to line up with the arena schedules and the location schedules as well. And so that's one reason because Gonzaga has always had so many kind of moving parts of their schedule. It's been uh, announced and released later, but you see most of the WCC's now schedule now have been out for the non-conference. So, um, you know, that usually gets uh, released first uh, and then the school's WCC schedule with the league comes up with is announced shortly thereafter. All right. So right around the corner, final question that we got this week. And remember you can follow us wherever you get your podcasts by searching for Gonzaga nation. You can also subscribe everywhere on all of the social media apps at fan nation Zags. You can send your questions to any of those. You can send it to Dan directly at Dan Dick 21, Dan, somebody uh, wants to know, who do you think is going to get this last scholarship spot for this year's squad? Yeah, there's one more scholarship left. Uh, and you've seen Gonzaga at times leave an open scholarship. You've seen um, Most many other schools leave a scholarship open. And a couple of reasons why is you never know. You might reward a scholarship player uh, early on in the school year if, if, if they've made tremendous strides or they're becoming kind of a, a piece of the program that, that you want to – reward many times uh you want to keep a scholarship open because in the transfer portal these days you never know somebody might be frustrated um and decide to transfer uh halfway through the season and if you have an open scholarship level uh available you can take advantage of that and bring on another talented player so i don't see any more movement going right now in regards to gonzaga adding a player between now and the start of school but that being said it's happened before. I like I like just keeping one in your pocket. I had not conceived of that. I thought that, okay, like they got all the scholarships. They got to use them. But no, play that one close to the vest. Just keep it as a just in case. Those are all the questions we got for you this week, Dan, on the mailbag edition of the Gonzaga Nation podcast. Make sure you guys subscribe to Gonzaga Nation. Leave a five-star review and uh, talk to you guys next uh, next time we get any more basketball news.